The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Welcome to the Ilsoy Advisor Webinar, Management Decisions Given COVID-19, brought to you by the Illinois Soybean Checkoff. I'm Jesse Schutman, and I will be moderating the webinar today. A few housekeeping items to begin this morning. A copy of the slides that will be presented this morning are available for download from the handouts pane of the webinar dashboard on the right side of your screen. You can ask questions during the webinar by using the chat feature also located in the dashboard. We will have time for a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Please keep your questions brief and to the point. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Gary Schnicki. Gary is a professor and farm management specialist in the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Economics at the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana and regularly contributes content to FarmDoc Daily. He focuses on farm and risk management by examining issues impacting the profitability of grain farms. Schnicki grew up on a grain and hog farm in Northwest Ohio and received his bachelor's degree from The Ohio State University and master's and PhD from the University of Illinois uh, Urbana-Champaign. I'll hand it over to Gary now. Thank you, Jesse, and thank you all for being here this day. I want to welcome you on to the webinar and uh, I'm wondering, uh, um, you either have, if you're a farmer, you either have your crop planted or you're waiting for the rain to go through or this is a, well, well, welcome aboard. What I'm gonna to do today is talk about some management decisions given COVID-19. And here is, let me get here, here is my advice. Um, I actually, so I think we're gonna have uh, some additional aid, for government aid this year. And I think that's gonna be more than the currently announced uh, coronavirus food and assistant program. And, with that aid, and if we think about that in terms about the same amount as last year's MFP program, most crop farms will be okay this year from a financial standpoint. Not great, not without uh, financial losses, but at the end of 2020, most uh, most farms are going to be standing and being able to go, go on and continue on. Um, in my opinion, 2021 is the question. And again, um, looking to 2021, and as you see, as we go through here, I'm sort of expecting lower prices post COVID than we did pre COVID. That's going to generate some um, ARC DLC payments, but we really have to begin to think that 2021 is um, not going to be that great of an income year. And so preparing for that possibility this year is probably a prudent thing to do. Given that sort of outlook, and again, I'll go through some more of that detail as we go through here, here's, uh, here are five things that I would suggest you to do. First, consider planting soybean on switchable acres. And again, I'm not saying here, if you got some acres that you haven't made the decision on and you're leaning can go either corn or soybeans, the economics have changed and now pre prefer soybeans. Second point is I would conserve cash flow and grab some cash in the terms of the PPP or EIDL programs. Um, I know that the, that some some may have some questions, moral questions about doing that um, because of the scope of the programs, and that's that's good or the 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 specific uh, focus of the programs. But again, thinking about this as a longer term thing, that cash may come into, come into needed in future years. Um, I would start marketing the remaining 2019 crop. Some of some farmers probably went on pause after the COVID-19 declines happened. I actually don't think we're going to have a major rebound, so begin marketing that again. Adjusting our 2020 crop marketing goals to lower prices, so we got to begin to think about these are the norms, so let's begin marketing into that. And finally, this is not an immediate sort of thing, but at the end of summer, we're going to begin making uh, uh, acreage decisions and uh, 
and crop insurance decisions. And I guess I would, uh, I, I, I would, would, would caution against setting 2021 cash rents at their current levels. Again, I know some of that's there's going to be pressures to do that, but let's let's be aware of the risk doing that. So that's my advice, and let me just go sort of through here how we come up with that advice. Here's the uh, the uh, the way I we think about the impacts of COVID-19 on the cash flows of a farm. Uh, we have the old 2019 crop sales which uh, have come down. We got a 2019 ARC PLC payment that somewhere that we'll be receiving in October. Those prices are likely going up. Crop insurance is sort of this for the 2019 years and the November, December time period. Right now you're looking at that probably not being paying unless you have a yield loss. So that, that safety net is just right there for corn where if we have continued price declines, we could see corn payments, but if we have good yields, we're likely not seeing crop insurance payments. Our new 2020 crop pay sales are, uh, are down as far as uh, income from pre-COVID and then looking way forward 2020 ARC PLC payments likely are going to make some payments. Again, that's October of 2021, but that's sort of the look at the cash flows that we're looking at. And I'm going to take you through and look at what we expect those sort of those prices pre and post COVID, some of the new programs, and then talk through ARC PLC payments finally coming back to our uh, return estimates for 2019, 2020, and 21. And that was what set up the management advice that I began this session with. So we're going to start here. Again, those are, we're going to start with prices for 2019, 2020, and 2021. As we're all aware, um, cash prices have fallen pretty dramatically. Um, Last time that we updated this chart for last Friday, at that point in time, and this is for Central Illinois, we were looking at below three dollar corn cash price, and right at eight uh, eight eight forty soybeans. So those prices have fallen dramatically. Corn, we were in the um, high three dollars in January and February. In soybeans, we were we 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 were in the high eight dollar range. So we've seen those prices fall considerably, um, and in fact, we were in some cases above uh, above above nine dollars on on soybeans. So we've seen substantial declines on uh, both corn and soybeans. And again, if you're looking forward, there may be some slight rebound in those. But overall, the expectations would be for corn cash prices to remain sort of near that $3 range. Um, soybean prices sort of in that $840, $850 range for, for the, remainder of the remainder of the fall. We um, sort of went through an exercise and said 2019, 2020, 2021, what were prices looking like for pre-COVID? And so this would have been the expectations that would have been in place pre uh, pre um, pre the instance of COVID that happened late February, early March. As we were looking at it then, and I'm just going to focus on the 2019, 2020, and 2021 years, um, the market year average price estimates in 2019 were 875 for soybeans, and that's a USDA number. 850 was sort of looking at for 2020 and 870 for 2021. So setting this up, those soybean prices um, were down in the mid $8 range, uh, below $9. And again, those were setting up because of uh, trade issues with China. And um, soybean or corn prices mid to mid to midish high on 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 a three dollar range post covid um thinking corn prices 350 three for 2019 2020 320 and 
340 for 2021. And again, those would be looking at those those price expectations came from looking at what cash prices done, have done, what futures prices have done, and um, sort of looking through that and thinking through that. So you can see um, that scenario for corn has corn prices down from pre-COVID uh, prices, but sort of getting back closer in 2021. So that's a sort of a longer run, uh, and there's there, there's going to be economic issues continuing throughout the 2020 year that goes into 2021. Again, ethanol being one of those things. For soybeans, 850 for 2019. Again, 875 to 850. Again, we we were already halfway through the uh, the marketing year. Um, that's a marketing year average price for the 2019 crop. So to get that 25 cent decline, we've seen you know pretty pretty large declines in the latter part of the year to get that price to fall. This is the largest price falls we would see in the marketing year that we've seen for a long long time. 2020 looking at 815 and 2021 830. So that's that's sort of the price outlook. Again. There's probably special issues more for corn. We've seen ethanol demand down considerably. We're seeing meat supply chain problems and not becoming evident, but ev evident. Um, there's a lot of issues to believe that, uh, that the hog crop for later in this year have been cut back significantly just because, due to slowing exercises be by hog producers. And then we still have a glut of hogs that some euthanization may be happening here on both the hog and pork sites. And honestly, the recession is likely to cause further declines in, uh, in, in, in meat demand. So as you're moving forward, we're getting some aid now that may keep uh, consumers buying, but um, uh, this recession likely is longer than that than than just the next. It's probably not going to be ending by the end of the summer, and will continue on further, and let likely will lead to at least some declines in livestock demand. So, I guess in in essence, we're saying prepare for a recovery maybe in 2021, but uh, be, because of reduced demand. For livestock and ethanol, we're expecting large carryouts for the 2019 year, 2020 year that will put a damper on prices. Given that, some of the things that we would suggest looking at is again, getting uh, looking at some of these new programs, uh, per paycheck protection program and economic injury disaster loans. And actually the e EIDL is, isn't a new program, but uh, uh, a, a continuing program. Look into those. Um, think about making an application for both of those. Um, again, what we're seeing likely is crop farms, if this is a crop farm audience, likely being okay for 2020. Um, okay is uh, okay is is a relative sort of thing. We're, we're going to see financial losses on most farms in 2020. And getting that cash assistance um, will be useful for 2020, but carrying on into 2021 when we're still likely looking at, at lower prices than we had expected before. USDA has also announced the coronavirus food assistant programs. We don't know much about those programs, but here is the basics of what we do know. Uh, again, this has been announced. It's in rulemaking stage at this point. There's $19 billion in total funding for this program. Um, $3 billion is allocated for food purchases, $16 billion to farmers, with $9.6 going to livestock, $3.9 billion for row crops, and $2.1 billion for specialty crops. Again, this is in a rule writing stage, so we don't know much about that. But here's just just to get, make a comparison here. There's 3.9 billion of for row crops. That compares, just to give you a comparison, that's 14.4 billion 
was in the MFP program for 2019. If you add up those three payments that were received, two of those which were received in 2019 and one in this year, that was a total of 14.4 billion. So 3.9 is 27% of the size of the MFP program in 2019. If you're just look, sort of looking at the allocation of that, and I, we, I don't know how they're gonna allocate the money, but just take, 25% or you know sort of that percentage of what we got to MFPs last year and you sort of get the range of what we're looking for for that 3.9 billion it would it would be roughly 15 to 25 dollars per acre just to give us a feel for what we're looking at there so that's a new program we don't know um some of that's supposed to be coming fairly quickly so we'll see what that 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 aid aid will look like. So those are new programs that will provide some 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 cash flows to farms as we're looking at at this year. That will counter some of the price declines that we saw. Um, some more detail about the USD Corona uh, food assistance programs. Again, detail has not been released, but here's what the press reports say. There they'll cover price losses that occurred from January 1 to April 15th at a 85 percent loss and the second there's going to be two payments and the second one 30 percent of the loss from the last two quarters and there will be a payment limit that's in a press report so we'll see if that actually does happen one would believe that that press report was based on something from what the administration has been saying all right so there's the coronavirus program sort of think 15 to 20 dollars $25 per acre. We will also be getting a PLC in our ARC payment for 2019. So you signed up for those programs or farmers signed up for those programs by March 15th. If you follow typical form, most of you signed up for PLC for corn and probably for wheat. Um, soybeans more ARC County. So um, that's where we saw the sign up, and, and some of you took ARC IC, particularly if you were in Northern Illinois. Those, I guess, I'll say here in a minute. Uh, those choices still still um, remain, seem to be good choices, for even after what we know about uh, COVID-19 responses and to our impacts on prices. Anyway, those prices are going to go up. Um, or excuse me, those 2019 payments are going to go up because the 2019 market year average prices are coming down. I'm going to show you some estimates of what those payments are doing so you can sort of see what those payments look like in, and again, these will be in October um, of this year. And again, they're related to production that happened in 2019. Again, what we think is is that, that what we saw, and we don't know the exact details for Illinois, but if we look nationally, most people took corn or PLC on corn, that likely was still remains the best choice. Soybeans took our county, and that's still a good choice. Um, I, in fact, if we're looking at the, uh, the, the evaluations of that, I still would our our models would still say that our county would, would likely pay more than PLC and wheat. Most people took PLC. We had some diversity on the corn payment because some counties in Illinois had some expected payments on corn. Again, people took ARC IC payments. That's still a good choice, and uh, we would the 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 models would still say that that was the correct choice. If anything, those 2019 payments are going up, but many that in particular had prevent plant claims where they took that on a prevent plant farm, those payments were at their maximum already, so there's not going to be any more, that those payments are not going to be increasing. So given that, here's what our PLC payment estimates would be for uh, 2019. So again, What's causing these to go up is this market year average price estimate. We're using right now 350 for corn. Again, we would have been above that um, 
in January, February, and early March. Um, three fifty for corn that'll generate a twenty cent payment rate, and that will generate roughly a thirty dollar payment uh, for 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 corn. For soybeans, um, we're projecting a market year average price of eight fifty. Uh, effective reference price for soybeans is 840, so that's still above it. So for those farmers that took PLC, there's not likely a payment. And wheat, there's a $48 payment uh, projected here. And again, those are all based on those PLC bushels that you see listed in the column, 180 for corn, 50 for soybeans, 50 for wheat. Um, and wheat payments have been there um, um, for, for a while. Uh, one note that this is not on planted acres, this is on base acres. Give you a feel, so that's PLC estimates. And again, a lot of farmers took um, PLC for corn. Soybeans likely took Art County. A lot of farmers did and wheat PLC. Here are our current estimates of where we're at for um, payments on our county for 2019, you you can see, and again, this would be it for a 350 price. Um, we still don't know what those yields are. We're we're estimating those yields based on uh, Nash yields. Actually, what they'll be using is our um, RMA yields. But you can see we're looking at some fairly substantial payments across the mid region of Illinois, sort of that northern central area there's some pretty large payments as well as in some counties in southern illinois so you know 30 to 80 dollars in those range and then other areas having zero payments so that gives you an update on what those payments look like and here's soybeans um, soybeans we've and again many farms took arc uh, county for soybeans and across much of the much of illinois um, we're projecting payments for Arc County for soybeans in 2019. Again, the market year average prices come down, so that's going to increase payments on Arc County, but they're not large enough yet to trigger payments. 850 is still above the effective reference price, so PLC would not trigger payments. All right, that's 2019, and again, that cash flow will happen in. Um, in the later part of this year, in October, and those if prices, if anything, are going 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 up. Um, PLC and ARC for 2020. So now we're looking at those payments for the 2020 year, which will be received in October of 2021. And important to note here is that those payments, if we have ARC county and plc what planning decisions you make do not impact those payments those payments are made on base acres so as you're going to see here we're going to be projecting some pretty large payments for corn uh, less so for soybeans but you don't have to plant to get those payments those are based on base acres so if you're making planning decisions don't don't include these 2020 payments in the calculus of when you're made of whether to plant corn or soybeans because there you those happen no matter what you plant if you have some arc ic farms the what you plant may impact the payments and um, if anything it probably points to planting one crop on those farms and it's and it's difficult to say which crop should be, be, be being being planted on on those those, those acres. Um, here are 2020 PLC estimates. The effective reference prices are 370 for corn, 840 for soybeans, 550 for wheat. Oops, we're using a 220 price for corn, 815 price for for soybeans, five dollars for wheat. Those generate payments for all crops. And you can see if we have 180 bushel corn PLC yield, 50 bushel soybean yield, same for wheat, 
we get a $77 payment for corn, $10 payment for soybeans, and $21 payment for, for, for wheat. Um, again, some substantial payments for corn are projected given the 320 price. Again, planning decisions do not impact whether you get those payments. Also, you're looking here at soybeans making a payment, $10. That $10 payment isn't, and when you made, when, when farmers made the dis, ARC PLC decision, they made it for 2019 and 2020, um, almost in, invariably the ARC County payment was larger for, for 2019 than that 2019, uh, or excuse me, 2020 payment. So that was is what causes those those payments to look look more positive, or that choice more positive. For 2020, just to give you a feel, if you've taken Art County or took those for corn, 86% of the benchmark price, and the benchmark price for corn is 370, it's 318. So we have to see corn prices below 318 market year average before there will be a payment on Art County without a yield loss. For soybeans, the number is 795. 925 is the benchmark price, 86% of that. So market year average prices for 2020 would have to be below 795 before there's a payment. And for wheat, the, the, the payment level or the market year average price for 2020 would have to be below 473. So, Again, there's no likely payments there without without some sort of yield loss. Moving on to crop insurance for 2020, here's what we're looking at. 388 is the projected price for 2020. Um, or and, and again, that is what would be used to set uh, crop insurance payments. 927 for soybeans. Uh, 388 is roughly equivalent to what it's been for the last several years for corn. 927 is below, so the safety net offered by these for crop insurance for soybeans is below what it has been in recent years. If we look at where futures prices currently are trading, and corn is roughly in that 330, 340 range right now, uh, where it's trading at, 85% of our Projected price 388 is 330. So if you got an 85% RP coverage level, we're right at the break-even point. If if we see prices go below 330, we're going to begin to see payments. If you got an 80% coverage level, it's 310 and 75% 291. So you can see there, 85% um, we're sort of right at that break point. And again, that's that's given that we have yields exactly at our APH or our guarantee yield and that's a good question whether that will happen. Soybeans we still have to see more of a price decline. Um, um, uh, soybean futures November contract is trading in that 860 range. 85% um, of our projected price of 927 will take us to 788. We still have to see price decline. So thinking about 2020 crop insurance, none of them right now, given where prices are at right now, will make payments without some sort of yield shortfall. And again, we'll see where those prices go. So what does this mean for returns? So we've sort of gone through some of the pricing scenarios. I'm going to take take you through 2019-2020 budgets pre and post COVID. Here's the pre COVID uh, scenario: 375 for corn, 885 for soybeans. This happens to be our Central Illinois. Those yields and those costs actually do come from FBFM farms in Central Illinois and high productivity land. This is pre COVID. Post-COVID, what we did was we reduced the price 20 cents for corn, uh, 30 cents for soybeans. <clears throat> how much of that price decline will vary? How much an individual farm will, uh, will that price decline will vary? Will vary by farm, and it will depend primarily on how much crop was left to be marketed. 
the same time we've seen those price declines, we're building in some coronavirus food assistance pay program payments. Those are 20 bucks. Again, those have not been announced. We would see the corn return go down from $5 to minus 21. Soybean returns hold right in there. So again, we saw those price declines, even with the CFAP payment, um, lead to returns that are coming down. Again, that $20 payment may be high, um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let's go on to 2020 budgets. Here we were projecting pre-COVID for soybeans, and this is central Illinois, a 68 bushel yield, 815, pr 815 price is where we're at currently. Um, again, 68 bushels would be where, where we would see the prices now. $30 MFP, or excuse me, our PLC payment, we come up with a minus $50 return here for, for soybeans. Um, obviously, that's not a done deal because we don't know what yields or prices are going to be, and everything can vary here. Here's some what-if scenarios, though. If we have a high yield and keep our 815 price, we can get that minus $50 up to $7. Uh, and again, that would be an increase in, uh, in yield. You can make an argument if that we saw this yield go from 68 to $75, that price would likely decline. I moved it down from 815 to eight, and we're back to the net minus $4 range. There is a potential, again, MFP, not building in MFPs, but if we get another $80 MFP payment, that would push with high yields and the $8 price, our return to sort of $76. So that would be positive, and that would be a good thing. So that's soybeans. Here's corn, and we're building in for 2020 a 215 price, 320 or 215 yield, 320 price, minus $128 farmer return. And we don't have any MFP payment built in here. Let's do some what if scenarios. We get another great yielding year here in central Illinois, 320 price, we get to minus 58. Take our price down from 320 to three, we're back at minus 105. Add in $80 of MFP payment, we get to minus 25. So that sort of gives you a feel for what we're sort of looking at right now. Again, if we look at 2020 budgets um, and build in an MFP payment, high yields and low prices, we see corn, soybeans as being more profitable than corn, which is why we're sort of saying, looking at the, the, the decisions that we're making now, and if you got acres that could go either corn or soybeans, probably leaning more to soybeans right now. Again, that ethanol impact is having ad, more adverse impacts on corn than soybeans. Obviously, none of them are, are particularly good. And a lot of our economics is bit, built or, on a, getting an $80 MFP light payment in 2020. All right, let's go to 2021. And it's just a repeat of 2020. So these columns, I'm gonna to go to 2021 now. Same yields, bit higher prices and put no MFP, no CFAT payment, nothing additional. You can see here, we get it to a minus $63 farmer return, $11 uh, farmer return on soybeans. I'm not suggesting that we make uh, our acreage decisions at this point, but just want to show we got high yields built in here, and these are sort of the prices where we're thinking we're at right now for 2021. We don't have any M MLP, MFP, or CFAP payments. We're looking at low returns. And again, it's probably not you know, a lot of things are going to change here, but note that these are early projections and we need to see what the summer does to price levels. And the, these are built on exceptional yields, by the way. 
But if we look at crop insurance right now for the 2021 year, if we were setting those right now based on these 2021 prices, that would be 330 for corn, 860 for soybeans. So our crop insurance price levels are coming down and we'll either need MFP or CFAT programs to make economics work if prices don't improve. So the major lesson there is be careful when setting 21 2021 cash rents. I don't know if we get an MFP payment or uh, another round of government payments in 2021, but they're absolutely critical in making financial decisions work on or finance and work even at average cash rent levels. So again, we'll probably, if we get additional government aid, um, we'll see, again, most farmers will be okay at the end of 2020. And again, I'm using the word okay. We'll see stress out there, but most people are going to be okay. And it's 2021 that, that, uh, that in my mind, becomes quite questionable. Again, coming back, uh, consider planting soybeans on switchable acres. Again, that's what our economics would say, and, and take a look at that. Again, grab the cash, and uh, again, you're probably again going to be okay for 2020. Get a bit concerned about 2021. Number three is start marketing remaining 2019 crop because we're not looking at these things getting better and adjust 2020 crop marketing goals to these lower prices. And again, I, just be careful when, and, and this is, we're getting way ahead of the game, but I want to plant in your mind that 2021, we got to be really careful with the decisions that we make later this summer and the cash flows that we commit. The minute we say cash rent is X, we've, we've locked in a lot of the budget for 2021. And let's, well, when we're looking at that, let's be remember that we're probably looking at lower prices. Maybe something happens this summer. Maybe we, maybe we have a, sh a shortfall in Iowa and everything, go, and we get good prices here and everything's okay. But let's be careful going into 2021 and and thinking about the cash that we're going to commit and let's conserve what we got this year and get through 2020, get through 2021, because this will get better somewhere down the way. And let's make our, make our, make our way to that point in, point in time. And uh, things will, 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 will get better, but it's going to be a little bit of time before we likely get there. That's what I have to say today. I appreciate your time. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll take them. But uh, again, I'm bullish on agriculture, but uh, not bullish on 2020 and 2021 returns. So we'll leave it there. Gary, thank you so much for giving us that information. Um, I just had written down a few thoughts and questions that I had. Um, so are there any two factors that are kind of sticking out in your mind or one factor even that could either A, turn our situation around completely or B, elongate our situation, our current economic situation? Yeah, that's a good, 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 good question. So what would, the so a lot of this comes down to what you believe is going to happen to the economy. And what would make this situation more better is if we see the COVID-19 uh, distancing measures come to an end. We don't have a, uh, we do not have a, have a, uh, another round of COVID-19 deaths and illnesses and everything gets back to normal and we have a roaring economy. That, then we get sort of back to where we were before. Um, I frankly don't, that could happen. That could happen. But 
frankly, if you look at what we're so doing social distancing wise, it would appear to me that at least in Illinois and most places, the summer is going to be um, locked or not, or we're still going to be pretty serious about uh, um, um, social distancing measures, which will have its impact on the economy. So what we ne really need to do is see this economy come back and that's going to take a while. The other thing that would would, would be would, would signal a turnaround would be a return in driving. Again, social distancing measures aren't consistent with that. So the economy coming back faster than sort of what we built in would change that situation. Number two is a yield shortfall in the Midwest currently or in Brazil next year. Um, if we could ha have less yield, we will have, it, here. here's sort of, if you back up and you think about sort of a bad scenario for 2021 cr prices is if we have a bumper crop this year, have large carryouts going into 2021, that's going to put uh, pressure, downward pressure on prices. The other thing that could change this situation is a return of export demand. Um, China begins buying again. Um, I'm, uh, I, I suspect that China has their own economic issues that they're dealing with. So that's that's sort of sort of a, a quicker return to normal. Sure. Well, well, I appreciate those um, responses, and I just want to circle back to your comments about cash rents. And I just wanted to know: Do you have any ideas or thoughts on tools that a uh, producer should have in their hands when they start those discussions with the landlords? And what should they come to them with? What kind of information should they be bringing to the table? Yeah. So. I would begin to make these, I, I would begin by showing the budgets for 2021 at the price levels that we are expecting those to be. And we will be releasing our 2021 budgets here in June and you can use those. And my guess is, is that uh, we aren't going to see uh, price responses in those. We will not be putting in, um, any MFP payments or any aid for 2021 in our budgets. So that will paint the picture of what this looks like for uh, 2021. If I were thinking about cash rents, um, I would seriously think about going to a variable cash rent. If that's not a possibility, then we could think about making a payment the, a ca setting a cash rent level that's based on prices now and no government aid and maybe add a, a payment in here before if government aid does happen and think about an MFP payment or, or a, um, um, whatever happens this year. Again, if you look at where we have been, a lot of the reasons why we have not seen cash rents come down in 20 or for 2020 and 2019 is the MFP payments that happened in both years. Um, incomes in 2019 and 2018 without MFP payments would have been extremely low and we would likely would have had so it's seen downward pressure on cash rents. Let's uh, begin 2021. Again, we l may be able to get out of 2020. Okay, but 2021 it isn't an election year, and uh, we're going to be seeing budget pressures everywhere. So maybe if we're going to set cash rent, you don't want to go all the way to variable cash rent, at least put a clause in there that says, we'll set this cash rent and this cash rent is based on not having any MFP or COVID payments or anything of that nature. 
we will make an additional payment of X percent of the payments if they happen. Sure. Well, those are, I think, very good thoughts for people to consider when they're thinking about and moving through those uh, decisions. And I just had one last question for you. Um, where are you going to find the latest information on COVID-19 effects on our markets, economy, and our legislation? So we continue to put, we continue to do, do uh, make those items available on FarmDoc Daily. Uh, so I, I re and that's sort of self-serving, but I, I rely heavily on FarmDoc Daily. Uh, Jonathan Coppice and Nick Paulson are doing a very good job of keeping us up on the policy responses there. Um, unfortunately, we know very little about uh, the coronavirus uh, food assistance program because the administration has been very silent about that. That's likely because it's working its way through rulemaking changes uh, stages right now. But that's what that's uh, that's where we're at i would not look at those programs um to have I, I if you're trying i would not consider those sorts of programs when making planning decisions they're going to try and keep i would guess that they're going to try and keep those uh programs as uh, neutral to deci to planning decisions as possible but the details of that um haven't haven't come out yet and I would be looking for it shortly but look for farm doc daily to to uh, come out with those details okay well thank you very much I'm just checking one more time to make sure we don't have any other questions out here all right so that concludes our webinar uh, management decisions given COVID-19 our next ILSOI Advisor webinar will be on June 4th, and you can register for that event or view the recording of this presentation and other soybean and agronomic resources on the checkoff funded website, ILSOI Advisor. Are there, um, excuse me, so thank you guys for attending and have a great day.